Welcome back to Sagittarius. We are here to do your July read for both the psychic energy and the astrology as well as the energy coming through for the ruin and um, your romance house. Now this is a love and general read and it is to cover you guys for the entirety of the month as well as I will have a mid-month love reading and an additional read I'm doing this month which is based on the karmic energy if you're a soulmate or a twin flame and there's a third party energy. They don't have to be together but you can tune into that um, because it will cover the astrology of the zodiac sign of that person as well as the placements and the cards um, and I'll channel that psychically but you will need to know the zodiac sign of the person. Otherwise, if you do have a friend or something to that degree and they're struggling with the astrology and maybe not having the spiritual tools, you can look at the read, but you would need to disregard the romance sector of that read. Now, for you guys, we do have Neptune retrograding in your fourth house, which the fourth house for you guys is based on your physical home environment, which is technically linking in very similar to Mercury in Cancer um, at the moment in retrograde. So it's taking on that theme as well. Now, for that placement, it is the eighth house. It is the place we learn to, um, you know, bridge that gap between who's working with us and who's not. But it's it's where we work in tribe energy. Um, it also can be connected to uh, legacies, um, you know, wills. It's, it's, it's the house of healthy codependency, so to speak. It's like, who can you depend on? Uh, what situations it's really an assessment and a vibration you move through um, at a spiritual level emotionally and physically that you assess those dynamics and you know directly learn from it and grow from that now that has been in your placement for around two and a half years we've got kind of that end pocket and this is a very important month with both the cancer and the capricorn axis that we've left uh in let me backtrack my <clears throat> where the nodes shifted and we're having the Sagittarius Gemini axis happening at the same time simultaneously. So yes, the nodes have shifted, but we're tying out that last pocket of this karmic cycle. So this rebuild energy is deeply, deeply important for all of us. And we really do need to get it right so that there's not that um, horrible energy towards the end of the year where we're having to really learn those energies very sharply. For you, it's both the eighth house and the second house. So it's the house of self-esteem. It can also be the house of your professional resources. It can be asset related, land, material value. But at a spiritual level, it's directly your self-esteem and where you needed to actually be focusing more on <clears throat> what you had before versus what you have now. And it's deeply transformed through that process. So be it, especially with the eighth house placement, if you lost someone uh, many moons ago and somehow life has changed and it's shaped you and maybe you didn't have those support networks at the beginning stage, that cancer placement for you in a life has really transformed you to be this person you are today. And it's really tapping into those natural resources so you can move your energy and your life forward to get the best out of the situation. So the axis with the uh, eclipse that is occurring, I have pulled cards for that area and for the new moon in Cancer, which is a secondary chance to turn over a new leaf relating to your self-esteem, your professional resources. And it's really asking us like, where are we standing in our way? And is there something potentially we can do or a spiritual blockage with Neptune retrograde in the fourth house of home coming up at a psychological level to block us from achieving our targets? This can also be the 12th house placement, also be the psychology of what's happening in the collective. And maybe at a very 3D level, we're looking at life and saying, due to X, Y, and Z, maybe we can't do this, but we're really having to think outside the box so that we can actually secure our physical foundation. Saturn this month is also going to be transiting back into Capricorn, which again is hitting your second house placement. So it can be jittery, it can be to the point where we're moving into the month with it transiting back direct where initially we're needing to find our feet. Also, because we do have the nodes in your zodiac sign, it is your first house placement. It's really making a conversational piece between your self-esteem and your direct connections and really needing to have those very important solid connections in your life in a sense of contracts, partnerships, um, spiritual
spiritual connections, marriages, but bringing things together and learning how to do that potentially even through uh, growth, socialization, um, communication, and your, your daily routine, really. The Gemini energy is linking into daily routine and technologies, but we'll get further into that as we move forward. Now, by the time we reach 2021, which a lot of the work we're doing from this point moving forward is really to achieve that for that balance in 2021. When we do have that transition, we are having Saturn and Jupiter transit into Aquarius. For the wider group energy, it will bode better and it is going to be hitting your third house, which is really great for movement. If you're thinking about careers, um, <clears throat> that link in with travel and communication, it's really going to benefit you. Also, in a wider group energy, um, anything very Mercury orientated uh, will be coming up for you towards 2020, but it, it does bode better when it comes to our relationships, our contracts, our partnerships at a very social level. Now, the ruin that you have is this, and this is for the entirety of the month, and it is in the upright. I had to restart it, so I'm having to join those. I tapped the computer and it turned off. Anywho, the ruin that we have, as I mentioned before, rush start, is such, and it is in the upright, as I mentioned, and it's body of water, lake, which again, with the energy of both Neptune retrograding in Pisces, which is very much psychology pertaining to the fourth house placement, which fourth house placement can be our psychology at home. What's going on? Are there anything that we need to iron out? It is an icky position for it to be, but there's a lot of growth and belief systems that come. So because it's Pisces energy and it is falling in your, um, your fourth house, your psychology, domestic issues, endings, you know, you're regrowing through that placement. So whatever's happening, um, you know, with your belief systems, with home, with connections, something has transformed you through this process, but you're reflecting a lot about it during the month, where the delusions are, where the illusions are, potentially if you've been lied to in the past or, or you had a perspective in some shape or form where home was going to be makes sense with nodes um, with what's playing out in the collective at the moment but it is there for a purpose and it is retrograde till the end of the year December is going to be bumpy if we do what we need to do moving forward we'll be able to handle it and we'll be in perfect alignment for it now with this it does deal with moon energy it's also water so very much Pisces and Cancer so Cancer is the eighth house placement of you know who is it that you can depend on what are the situations that you can depend on where can you have a healthy codependency in your tribe mentality and the people around you and the people you're surrounding yourself with and that direct fourth house placement of delusions and illusions with the very Neptunian energy but the direct reality of what the physical foundation is and if you're wanting to transform it what would need to occur for that to be so so it is very psychic so to speak and you're gonna have to tap into that and really um, look at your physical situation it is connected to journey across water imagination intuition artistic creativity and and fluidity soul journey psychic powers innovation and dreams you're very Jupiter energy and because this frequency with the nodes is asking you to transform it's very first house placement I can't lie, I've had the first house placement with the nodes. So the Cancer Capricorn axis has hit my natal chart for the last year and a half. We're ending that, well, maybe a bit longer. So we are ending that and it has been really unique to move through. It has been at times very challenging, um, triggering, transforming, never to say the less. But I have evolved through that process and I do see the benefit in it. It isn't fun during that process, but you will completely change. Some people around you may not understand what's going on with you. It is very internal. So it's happening at a very internalized level, maybe even a psychological and 3D level of your direct appearance, uh, your self-esteem, including situations that are playing out around you. You directly are transformed due to that. Now, it's not that you ever leave when you go from the south node to the north node, that you leave it, that you leave your innate way of being, but you are directly transformed by needing to focus 
on the actual energy of the North Node in Gemini, and that is your relationship sector. So there is something to do with your spiritual beliefs about yourself and direct connections that through that, they are helping transform you. But you also are being more authentic to what directly you resonate with. So if there has been some turmoil with that in the early stages of these nodal axes, as well as the Cancer Capricorn energy playing, it does make perfect sense and just be really gentle with yourself. You do need to tap into the psychic frequency of what's playing out for you and how you can look at that. But this is really going to help you tap into, you know, your guides may be actually communicating with you and trying to give you a heads up. Maybe you had a belief system connected to a loved one that's not here of a paradigm of connections and what that was meant to be. And maybe that's transforming at this point in time and the world is a very new place. So you're having to look at scenarios very, very differently. As I said, I have pulled your romance out, so let's get into it. That was a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> okay. In the past, maybe there were people around you that weren't working with you. That maybe you were very focused on the financial aspects. And it has been hard because Capricorn has been um, in the Jupiter energy. So maybe you've had to really level up. You've been pulled in two directions. Uh, maybe people have felt that you have been a certain way and they're confused by you. But however this is, whether it be people or you, there is this sense that that's no longer so. There is something in your life that transformed you. This could be a person that's no longer here, but it's all this new energy. You might be walking through into this month feeling, okay, I really need to let some things go. I really need to... Um, let these spiritual blockages, these belief systems go, or a situation. It can even just be you completely, that you, that old vibration of you, you're no longer willing to put a mask on for other people's benefits. Um, but I think it's more, oh, I don't think it's more one side than the other. I think it's many things, to be quite honest. But you're tapping into your intuition with it, and I do feel your guides are really communicating, and you need to trust whatever that is. Wherever this is taking you, it is again to do with connections. It's like, okay, who is my tribe? Am I the tribe? And, and really, you know, in order to have any beautiful connection, we always need to, um, everything we're wanting outside of ourselves is generally what we need to fulfill within ourselves. And I'll give you an example. Sometimes we feel people don't understand us, but have we spent time directly to actually say to ourselves it's okay that we do understand the oddness and the quirkiness of our character with Saturn moving into Aquarius at the end of the year it will almost be tribe orientated so we really need to develop that energy where we feel very comfortable within ourselves that we don't need to just fit into a tribe energy that we love ourselves regardless of what anyone is thinking um, sometimes it doesn't have to make sense to anyone else, but if it makes sense to us and we're at peace with that, we are actually in alignment. And I do feel you do have many hopes and dreams that you're wanting to achieve. And it's really coming up and you're meditating upon these things. And you might even be thinking, is it out of your league? Um, is it out of your depth, your field, your industry, um, your grasp, I'm feel, whatever this is. But I do feel you're reaching for it. <clears throat> like I said, because Jupiter, which is your home sign, is in Capricorn, it has been really accountable. And the axis of the energy of the second house, it's a lot of self-esteem building. It's a lot of networking. And I feel through your networking is where, if you can tap into your natural resources, you've had to really go back into that the pit of your energy to actually retrieve that. Now, Chiron's going to be retrograde this month all the way through pretty much till the end of the year as well. It is Mars energy, which is very similar to your energy in a sense of it's got power and it fights for what it wants. Retrograding, we're looking over those energies. And for you, it does hit your fifth house placement, which can be to do with childhood wounds, children, births of new ideas, um, romance and your luck so if you're wanting to transform that that pain body experience of the retrograde is go into that crevice with 
even if you had a belief system to do with something, you became resourceful through that adversity. And I feel you're going to be able to directly apply it to the situation. Now, in your financial sector, with your money this month, making good, healthy, solid choices is where, where you're at. But again, don't feel that when we're in lack mentality, it's like, gosh, I've got to be careful. And I keep saying this, I've got to pay the ferryman. Um, yes, we do have to pay our dues. Do be cautious with cash. But at the same time, you know, think about the goals. Think about the hopes and dreams. Yes, we do have Neptune retrograde. But if we have to keep doing that, there could be a foundational related dynamic that we need to look at so that that's not so. And maybe this is what you're directly working towards and that's why you're doing this at this point in time so that by the time we reach the end of the year, this energy is not a problem. Now in your career, you might be, again, basing assumptions and assessments on a falsity. Now that can be because, as I mentioned, Neptune is retrograde. Also, if you don't feel you resonate with the career sector or what you're working on, or you're feeling disillusioned by what's going on in the collective, again, it does come down to an emotional vibration. Sometimes, yes, there are things outside of our control, but we can tap into our creativity. And it may be really thinking outside the box as to you know how you can achieve something. This month, really looking at some of the reads moving into July, I found some of the energies from a psychic medium's perspective interesting because, yes, on, on some levels, I grasp the energy, especially since I do look at my zodiac sign and the other external energies in the moon. But the deeply profound energy was, yes, I did understand what they were talking about, but it was directly connected to external energies, not necessarily me. So sometimes these can be external energies that you have absolutely no control over and that can be true. But I do feel due to that, we can only choose what we can do to move forward, not necessarily really playing that chess to see what the other person's move may be. I do feel you guys are pulled in two directions. You may need to really focus heavily on maybe psychology, again with Pisces energy coming through, Collectively with Neptune retrograde, we can see a lot of distortion. There can be people around us emotionally triggered. Uh, with Chiron retrograde in Aries, it's very competitive energy, so it can be um, a lot of people feeling very agitated. This can be really pulling you back where it's creating confusion because you're trying to be very focused. Where's your Virgo placement? 10th house career makes sense. Okay, so. Any Virgo placement, you're going to experience confusion there because we have Neptune retrograde in Pisces, which is crown chakra and concentration. And if you have a Virgo placement, which we generally do have a placement, it's going to cause creation in that zone. So it is the 10th house placement, which does link into your career, your reputation. You're going to need to really focus and try and eliminate the white noise so that you can deal with what's at hand. And I feel if you can do that, you'll be able to manage the energy this month. If you can't, there's going to need to be a foundational change so that can be so. But I do feel you're being pulled in two directions. Now, tribe. Some of you are just feeling you want to be social. You just want to mix with people that are lighter with our dra a drama energy. Um, some of you may be leaving your friendship groups and feeling they don't resonate with you. Um, may, some of you, though, have not had that. Even though we had Venus and Gemini, it might have not been as social as you would have liked it to be. And there may have been a lot of accountability with Jupiter in Capricorn at the moment. <clears throat> and it's in retrograde that it just hasn't alleviated that where you could do those things. With your family, again, concerns about the fourth house placement. Really having to be very careful, maybe concerned about accommodation, home, money, finances, stability. It doesn't have to be that it's completely you. It could be external energies that are dealing with family related dynamics and you're observing it. You may also be looking at the collective and going, wow, where is this going? How is this going to be moving forward? So I do feel for you guys, if something to that degree is coming up, I feel you're really attempting to do all you can to create that balance. It does make it hard this month, and that is because we still have the vibration of 
Mercury and Cancer retrograding. So with that falling in your eighth house of shared resources, make sure everyone's pulling their weight. Make sure that everyone's surrounding you, be it it's at work and you find, you know, you're making sure you're signing your paperwork. Um, whoever it be, wherever this cash component's coming from, or your direct home environment, it can be things breaking, um, home related dynamics going on, problems occurring where you're having to return, maybe having to leave work, etc. However, it's playing out. Mercury really relates to the frequency of um, emotions. It can also be, again, um, mother energy, feminine energies, a direct emotions of what can come up, a physical structure in which we live, uh, the domain of the people that we share that vibration with, and they don't even have to be under the same roof to be tried. So something to that degree really is playing out, and again, you're going to have to follow your intuition as to where do I push my energy to for the bigger picture. We won't have Saturn and Aquarius till the end of the year moving into January so because it's left that zone and it's bounced back into the Capricorn energy I really call July the energy of um, bombardment as well as level up and having to roll with it there is reprieve but it's through being accountable that we keep moving that ball forward meditate and, and sit back and have some quiet time if you need be um, if you're needing to drop the ball in certain domains to counteract and deal with other areas, do such. But really tap into your emotions and keep grounded um, through that. But give yourself time if you're needing it. Even if it's like five, ten minutes to have time out and say, look, it's a bit too much right now. Um, be it you're creating healthy boundaries with people and saying, I'm a little bit overwhelmed. Need a bit of time. Just give me five, give me a day, whatever it be. You're within your right to do that and it's going to help you raise your vibration. Now, during this lunar eclipse full moon in Capricorn, it is a full moon, which you can find around that time. Let me see. Okay, July 11th, we're having Chiron retrograding. It will still be in shadow prior to that, so it does make sense. It's very Mars energy. We're also, we do have Jupiter retrograde um, pretty much until October. And we have... We should be still moving through a little bit of the shadow of Venus. So we've still got Venus, um, you know, it's sort of in the under realm, so to speak, with Scorpionic energy. It's going to be heavy either side of that week. You also can see weather changing energies. You do have something you're wanting to get off the ground. Now, again, because it is your... You, oh, I'm feeling career, I don't know why, but there can be career, there can be something to do with your self-esteem, um, you're wanting to out with the old, in with the new energy. With the second house placement, you've been working on this for a long time, this can be where you're physically wanting to start this brand new vibration, usher something in but needing to leave something behind. I'm also feeling another energy, but I'm going to tune into it. Something really good through the darkness is coming. This can be a romantic offer. Hmm. I'm going to pull a clarifier because I'm getting this real weird vibe. Be careful. Trust. Trust yourself, okay? If you're in a connection and somebody's making advances towards you, and this could be a very singular um, kind of frequency because all of you are in different positions. So when a message comes through, I'll give it. Those of you that are in a connection, this feels like an old person, okay? There could be an old energy that comes back, which can be a blast from the past, and they're declaring how they feel. And you're like, yeah, but I've sort of started this new life. I feel really look at the delusion in that energy, okay? Just be very mindful of this. But if something does come up for you and you feel really undecided, you need to be sitting with it and going, okay, where, where am I at? Where am I at right now? What's my intuition telling me? How am I feeling about this? There's also going to be something to do with the contract. So if you have been waiting on something, 
especially when it does come to employment because it is to do with your professional resources. I do feel you could be leaving one location and moving into another, but what you need to do, pay attention to documentation, I will say. Yeah, so leaving one and going to another for some of you. This, this is almost, some of you, this actual proposal could relate totally separately, and I was feeling low, totally separately to moving back to an old place of employment for some of you, or a career sector that you used to do. Could have even been a hobby. But it's helping you have this transformation. It may be a bit delayed. Make sure you read the documentation. There might be some snags as the transitional state, but I'm still seeing it come through, but there can be a bit of a delay due to the fact that we do have Mercury retrograde in that placement of the eighth house of shared resources. Now, near the new moon, again, follow your intuition. Now, the new moon in Cancer is eighth house of shared resources. Follow your intuition. You will know. Where are your emotions taking you? What do you believe? It's got to take you to higher ground, okay? You'll know where this is. You must trust that. Romantically, again, I'm feeling home. Concerned about, you know, what would need to change in order for all of these cycles to come full 360. Even if you're tuning into a soulmate twin flame partnership, you're looking at maybe past energy with the Neptune frequency. <clears throat> wanting justice, wanting this to come back into a balance. Maybe even juggling two ways this situation can be. Maybe you were juggled. I feel you pulled in two different directions. And again, your intuition is going to be very, very important. There can be a bit of ego, but I feel it's more maybe moving forward you're like no um, I believe I can do it I believe I can do it there's something going on here it's something to do with um okay paradigm if you're getting hunches as to a need to move I do really feel you need to pay attention to that. You do have, okay, I am seeing, it's weird that this is coming, something really big is happening with you. You do have some major things going on. You do have love here, but I, I think while you're in this frequency, your, your sole focus at the moment is stability. This person may have created an instability or it can be there is this internal kind of um, transformation happening that you're keeping quite hidden from other people. You may feel that some of these circumstances, your healing, um, your recovery, your, your spirituality, has it, plus what's happened in the collective has had this delay energy coming through. But you're trying to balance everything now. So you're wanting this new vibration, but there could be a purge that comes up or a, a how do I place it? No can do. This balancing energy of not saying anything, trying to bring it together, making peace for something, and you're ready to move forward. Now, I'm, I'm really not worried about the person I feel it's more you at the moment that's going through this mass transformation. I'm still going to read that card, but... Yeah, you're getting... Okay, something to do with the legal document and balance. You're not feeling quite yourself. Yes, you know where love is. But I'm feeling it has been pretty tough the last few weeks for you. You haven't had as much time to do the energy work on yourself yet. Okay, it feels busy, chaotic. This can even be this entire month. But home energy, fourth house placement, feeling left out in the cold, accommodation, notes in cancer that we had. 
you're trying to balance something but you also are protective of yourself this protective energy is maybe something was said or something was done and you you don't quite want to throw sputum everywhere in a sense of how you feel because this person i don't feel knows what what the diddly oh is what's going on they feel they know you really well but i feel there's something you're spiritually keeping to yourself that they internally they're a bit confused Okay, I'm going to pull some other cards. I'm seeing a pattern here. There was a big plan as to what was going on. Something's come at left field, and I feel it's more in this month or maybe in the last eight weeks. Whatever this is, you've had to really tap into your intuition, the both of you. And it's to do with the cycle that, you know, it's causing stress because there's something at, at a very... Um, spiritual level that needs transforming if there's been a third party energy here I feel it might have come unexpectedly so this could be past tense well past tense but I'm also feeling with with this energy I'm going to pull a chakra card Okay, we've got scarred sexuality. With that chakra, it can also be temptation energy. But okay, the, the reason I'm saying sacral chakra, I'm feeling sacral chakra. With Neptune retrograde and our psychology, a plus seven going direct, it's our foundation. When, when our foundation is not sturdy or we're assessing it spiritually, and we have a belief system, an egoic belief system. It's due to past tense experiences. It's like, okay, if I mix a cake mix and I add the eggs to that packet mix and I do it as per the specifications on the pack, when I put it in the oven at the correct degree, family keeps coming up. I told you. Fair base frequency. Now, the orange chakra, this is what I was psychically predicting. So I mentioned sudden direct, which is red, the direct foundation, home, fourth house placement, moon, cancer, Pisces. There's a lot of work going on here for you and your chart. The orange chakra is activated. Notice it's the nine. The nine is time to meditate. But with nine energy, it's hermit mode card. When you look at the hermit mode card, there's no going back. You have to go forward. So it's after the fact of a situation and having to go, wow what happened we move into the third eye which is hermit card to actually process all that was sometimes during that um we move into fair base frequency we tap into pacifier energy and that's been a huge theme this month of okay what and it can be that it's already played out and we're kind of looking at the aftermath of that sort of like when, when we've been in hermit mode like in the collective some people have been joking about the fact that we've, you know, we've been tapping into food energy and gosh, we need to get our health back on track. Your sixth house placement is Taurus, um, which there can be that frequency of luxuries there. So if that was so and you were tapping into something at a very luxury, uh, you know, level, and when we deem luxury, it's a bit like the food pyramid. It's like the non-essentials at the top. You know, which is usually the fatty foods and things like that. It's like, we love those things. I love those things. Um, and down the bottom is all the healthy things we need to have. But there appears to be, it's like done a swap. And it's been potentially the luxuries and the non Something like that. You get my gist. But it's due to a trigger. It's due to an emotion. Whatever that is. It's like, wow, after the fact, okay, what are we going to do from here? Where do we go forward? Both energies at the moment, after a fact of a situation, have gone, wow, I didn't see this coming. So there's an external situation that can be a document, something unexpected that occurs, and it's shifting the whole direct foundation. God of vulnerability, goddess of forgiveness in reverse. There's something that 
that's being purged here. Whatever this is, is to help you see this, to look at this very differently. I think there's been focus on other things and it's almost like universe is trying to bring you back together so that you're not looking at it from that perspective and you can see something very different and heal this energy together. But both of you are mirroring each other very largely here and there is spiritual growth. Okay. Definitely something to do with finances. If you're wanting to get something new off the ground here, oh, something to do with children as well. Family, children, tribe. Okay, what is the outcome? And I'll do a mid month rate. <clears throat> As long as you're balanced, be very careful with external people and karmic energies at the moment. You know. Okay, this person's very loyal to you. They understand you need a bit of time out. They're really tuning in to their growth and nurturing. They feel different. Whoever the feminine is in this energy, they're spiritually having a transformation. They're going through a complete transformation. Um, there could be a child. I don't know. Well, why am I feeling a child? There's child energy here. Could be inner child wounds. Sagittarius, you guys maybe have a person that is moving into their black moon Lilith energy. Now, that is the Neptune frequency. Pisces, okay? it's. Let's look at it. By the time we have mid-month, this energy is going to shift, but initially you need to be careful of shady characters. There is a belief here to do with feminine energies and emotions and power and something to do with that, there's healing something you didn't know is going to be brought to light for you and it's going to help you move forward but whatever this is I'm feeling it's quite large be very cautious cautious in a sense that I am seeing two energies here I'm seeing two people if you know and look we're all in different situations we've got some that are on the fence we have some that are in um, karmic connections. We've got some that are in a direct connection and very happy but trying to deal with external adversities and you know bridging that gap. So it depends on where you are in the sphere but there is I think for all of you there's two offers. You need to be careful which apple you pick. Right? Tune into the what, where, why and how and I think that's the key because overall I do feel you're safe providing you use your moon energy. Seeing what is a delusion and illusion and what is a reality, you got the psychic card. You're in the knowing that you need to let certain things go. What what can you build with? What can't you? Eighth house placement. I feel if you can trust your intuition, you're gonna make it through this month. If you need a hand, link below, love and light, you can do this. I'll see you mid-month for love.